Hey guys, what's up? By Second Trend here from One Hub Gazette, here with my next video. And in this one, I'm talking a little bit about the uh, announcement Supercell made and kind of the impact I think it's going to have on the game. So I'm talking about uh, how the war scene is going to continue to develop, assuming that the uh, Supercell is true to their word and they're going to take care of a lot of the modding issues, and the game's going to be pretty clean and fair play. Uh, so before I get too far into it, just want to reiterate to you guys. This is just my personal opinion, so uh, it's just my own thoughts on this. Not necessarily the right thing, but what I'm thinking at this point, and uh, might be what you guys are thinking as well. Um, also, this is also assuming that, like I said, Supercell does stay true to their word. They do take care of modding for the most part. Obviously, they can't get rid of every single modder, but that they get rid of most of the problem, and it's really on a much lower scale that we're going to see it in, uh, continuing. And obviously there's going to be people that are, you know, and it's already happening, people are saying, oh, there's no way they're going to take care of all the modders, uh, we keep adapting, they can't uh, track us, they can't tell who's modding, and uh, they're not doing anything about it. And I think they have been doing some bans, not at the extent I think they're going to get it up to at some point, but they've done some temporary bans from what I heard, and uh, rem remember that they told uh, us in their announcement that they're just going to they're going to give people a certain time period to uh, get rid of the third party software. Obviously, that's probably up by now, but that was kind of delaying the start of this. They wanted to give people kind of a grace period to have the option of getting rid of XMOD or IMOD or any other third party software. And I think that did delay it a little bit. But um, there's been a small number of bans from what I've known. I don't think I've seen any huge modding claims go down. But obviously, just this program is just in its infancy, and we'll see how it continues and uh, whether or not it's on a full scale. But in this video, we're kind of assuming that the uh, that modding is going to be taken care of for the most part. And for a lot of people, uh, that stops right there. They disagree with that, and that's fine. Um, you might disagree with that. But for those people that think that could be a possibility, which I think it's definitely a possibility, it's worth considering how the game would change in war. Um, and my thoughts on this, basically we have to look at what modding does for the game, what it does for the war community, and it's not any different than what a fair play attacker does. They're still using the same troops, still the same game, the same format, same attacking. They just get to do it multiple times. They get to do it, you know, as much as they want, 50 times in one day. So instead of having uh, one attack every day, which is what you would do if you have back-to-back -back wars, two attacks every two days, one attack every day, uh, you could have, let's say, 50 attacks per day. And what that does is it gives you a chance to kind of see what works and what doesn't a little bit better, I think. I don't think much many people disagree with that. You have an opportunity to see what's working, what's not, um, as much as you want. You continue to change your attack and see what will finally get the three-star or whatever. So it's not anything fundamentally different, it's just how many times you can do it. So people often say that most of the innovation comes from uh, modding and people that use this third-party software because they have the most time to practice these attacks and uh, I'm not exactly sure how that, uh, if that's true or not, but one thing to remember is that modding, the modding community does not make up the majority of the war community. And a lot of people would say, oh no, there's more modders than you think. Uh, we're, we're the majority, but no, fair play is still the majority, uh, and that's including all war people, not necessarily just the highest level, because that is a little bit heavily uh, in favor of modding, I'm not sure what percentage, but the war scene as a whole, from people who were kind of mid-level war to the top level, it's definitely overwhelmingly uh, fair play, and uh, I mean, you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts, and that's just the fact uh, modding is not the majority for war as a whole so it's not like uh, what I'm saying is that there's more numbers of people doing fair play attacks and that balances it out so it's not like modding have the overwhelming majority of the attacks being done and that's something to consider so uh, what that means is that modding attackers aren't the majority of people who are doing these attacks they're not always going to be the ones innovating because there's so many more people doing fair play attacks that it balances it out more. So a lot of the innovation still can come from the fair play community when you think about it that way. And um, so yeah, I just wanted to get that out there that 
it's not like we're going to have a huge loss of innovation. I think it'll be a little bit slower. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I think it's still going to continue to innovate. Not quite as fast, like I said, a little bit slower, but we're still going to see new attack strategies. And anything that's lost in the lack of innovation is going to be made up for in the new opportunities for uh, clan wars to be expanded, new game modes, all this new stuff when you can be confident that pretty much everyone, or at least the vast majority of people, are fair play. And at that, you won't have any like people that are openly modding because they'll know the band's there. So that way, it's really going to be uh, anyone that's going to be involved in kind of high-profile stuff. You can be confident it's fair play, and that allows you to open up all kinds of new stuff. Clash Con could have much more serious wars with solid war attackers. Uh, like I said, new game modes, new rankings for clans. You can make being on a high win streak very prestigious. Uh, there could be a leaderboard, stuff like that. Because once it's all at a level playing field, it really opens up leaderboards and different kinds of uh, opportunities to try to see who the best uh, war clan is. So that's just kind of my thoughts on this. Obviously, people are just going to disagree, but I think the game is going to have a lot of potential if uh, third-party software users are eliminated for the most part. Um, but like I said, I mean, modding people do not make up the majority of people that, that play this game for war. It's just that's the fact. So a lot of disagreement. Let me go, let, let me know what you guys think in the comments below because everyone has their own opinion on this and I'd like to see what your guys' is. So I'll be reading through the comments. Let me th know what you think and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video once I get back to some more uh, of a more normal schedule. Been a little bit crazy this weekend but I've been getting the videos back out a little bit more regularly. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Stack to Toronto.